Hi everyone, I'm Amy from From The Cauldron and in today's Vlogmas I'm going to be making some more knitted decorations. I made this earlier in the series and today I'm just doing something very simple and making a knitted paper chain. Now I've got, this is part of my knitted paper chain that's uh, on the tree already. Lots of different yarns. I started making this uh, probably about 10 years ago when we had quite a small tree and we didn't really have any decorations so uh, I thought well I've got yarn why not knit some fun decorations and uh, yeah I've got this paper chain that uh, goes on the tree every year but now that we, we live in a slightly bigger house we, and we've got a bigger space for a tree so we, we can get a bigger tree the knitted paper chain it looks quite small on here now so I'm going to be knitting some more more links to go on this paper chain. Now this project is perfect for using up little scraps of yarn like this because we're just knitting a strip like this that's going to turn into our chains and this is about 18 centimeters by about two and a half centimeters and for this I use my four millimeter needles and DK weight yarn but it's so flexible you can just use whatever you want to make a strip that we then turn into a ring like this. Now I like to use my, the long tail cast on method that's just my favorite way. The way I, I work out how much yarn I need for the long tail cast on is I wrap this wrap it around my needle so I've not not really tight, not um, not really really loose, just fairly loose. So I've done it 20 times, and because I need 40 stitches, I'm just going to double it up, and then add on a bit more. That's just the way I do it. And how I cast on. So I've done my my slip knot there. I hold the the threads in this hand, and then I wrap one, th one thread around my thumb, one th thread around my first, my finger, and then the needle goes under the yarn closest to me and then over, so it goes under that one and then it goes around and over that one as well, like that, and then you just pull it. Now, I'm not the best at describing this. If you haven't understood a word that I've said, I recommend you go and find very pink knits and uh, that's how I learned how to do this long tail cast on through Very Pink Knits tutorials. And they are yeah, much better at describing these things than I am. But it's quite a quick cast on, 40 stitches, and I still have a little bit of tail left. But if I didn't have enough of this tail to make any more, to make the right amount of stitches, it doesn't matter as long as you've got about 40 to make the strip long enough. It honestly doesn't matter. This pattern is really flexible. And if you don't have DK yarn, then use whichever yarn you've got. If you've got four ply, if you've got um, chunky yarn, you know, it doesn't matter. You're just knitting a little strip that's approximately eight centimeters by three. So, and this strip, bring it back, is made up of eight knitted rows. That's all we have to do for knitting it. So the way you knit, you get your needle goes through through the first loop like that. You go underneath, wrap your yarn around, and pull it off again. So you just go. It goes underneath, wrap the yarn around, bring it back. This first row can be a little bit tight, depending on how you have. Um, cast on, how tightly you've cast on. This is the first stitch that I learnt how to knit. <laughs> it's the knit stitch. So again, it just goes under, it goes through the first loop, your needle's underneath, the, the, this needle is underneath the needle with all the stitches on. Wrap it around, wrap it around anti-clockwise and then just slide it off like that. Again, if you're not really understanding my garbled instructions, I do recommend going to um, Very Pink Knits. I've learned so many different techniques from them and there's certain 
uh, techniques such as German short rows that I never remember how to do. So every time I have a pattern that requires German short row, I go and find their tutorial on, on how to do it. Now this style of knitting is uh, English style, where you hold your the yarn that you're knitting with in your right hand. There's a style called Continental, which I wish I knew how to do, where you hold the yarn in your other hand and you kind of slip it through it, it's uh, see it's really yeah it's a bit like that you slip it you slip the knit you put the needle through in the right way but then you already have the yarn pulled across so you, you kind of wrap it around I'm really not very good at that I could actually use this project to try and practice my continental knitting <laughs> maybe I should do actually because um it's all you're doing here is knit stitch and from everything that I've heard of people who know how to do both styles, English and Continental, Continental is much faster. And I really want to learn how to do cross, um, to do crochet. And I, you need to be able to hold the yarn in, I need to be able to hold, my, hold the yarn in this hand to do crochet. And I just, I really struggle with that. So there we go, that's the first row knit. And now I'm just gonna keep knitting backwards and forwards eight times. If we have a look at these rows, you can see there are four ridges along here. So you've got one, two, three, four. And in garter stitch, which is what this stitch is, that means there are eight rows. You can see here, it's a little bit clearer on this one. You've got two rows in this pinky purple and then two, well, two ridges in this pinky purple and then two ridges in this green. So you can see one, two, three, four. We know that's eight rows. And now we're going to cast off. Again, with cast off, use whichever method you are most comfortable with. I don't actually know what this method's called. I can't remember. Um, but you just knit the stitch and then slip, slip the stitch over. So you knit a stitch and slip the previous stitch over it. Don't put it too tight. Just have it nice and loose like the rest of your knitting has been. If you want to do a different cast off method, that's really up to you. Cut the rest of this bit off. I see there's only a little bit of this left over, but I'm not gonna waste that. I'm going to add it to my ball of really small ends and I'm just gonna carry on knitting. So once you get to this, I like to just stop at that bit and then start knitting more links for your chain. And if you, if you run out of your yarn halfway through, it doesn't matter. Just tie on another piece of yarn and carry on. So I've done there and there. Right, got lots here. I like it to be, I like my paper chains to be a bit different. So I try not to do any more than two in the same color of, in the same color. Once you think you have enough of these, then you start sewing them together. Now this, you don't need to be overly neat. I like to, t I like to use the, the end that I've just cast off just to make sure that it gets properly tied, tied on, tied off. Just like that. And then I mean, you, you could try and make this really neat, but this is all, you know. And then I just hold these together like this and just sew them. I think this is sort of like a mattress. No, this isn't mattress stitch. I know, I'm just holding them together, sewing them. It's not gonna be the smoothest of um, uh, seams, but it's all going, it's gonna be hidden once you've got your, once you've got multiple links together and you know, no one's, hopefully no one's gonna be looking too close. It all look really good. And then once you got to the end, I just, you secure your end, tie it off, and just secure, just tie your end off in whichever way you want to knot it. I just like to make a little knot that way. And then I just weave in the end in this little bit that you've knitted, I've knitted. I did cut this end a wee bit short. There we go. Cut that line. 
last little bit off. There we go, see that? Yeah, you turn it around, doesn't look too bad at all. I think it looks quite good. And then again, this was part of the cast on end. It's cast on tail. Again, I just like to knot it on itself. So I'm gonna pass the tail back through that loop. That's nice and secure. With something like this, it's not gonna be get too much movement. You're not gonna be pulling it about too much. So I don't double knot these. So when I'm making cardigans or hats or anything, I double and triple knot everything. So there's one link. And then we just join on another like this. And then you end up with a bit of a chain like this. And you just keep on adding and adding until you've got enough. And then when you think you've got enough, maybe add a couple more because I'm just a bit like that. And then once you think you've got enough for your chain, you can do the fun bit, which is going to add this to your Christmas tree or wherever you want to hang it. I finished making part of my chain for now. There's another 60 links on this and I just need to add one final link to join it onto this one here. If I can find the end, there it is. So I'll just get these two together and sew this one in place. And there we have it. The rest of my knitted paper chain. Now I have the fun job of trying to put it on the tree. There we go. And it, I thought it would be too much, but actually it looks pretty good, I think. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Vlogmas. I really hope you enjoyed it. Do please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought and tune in tomorrow for another episode of Vlogmas. Thank you so much for watching.